speaker. David Morris, Professor of Surgery, St. George Hospital. Okay, so the spike protein of the coronavirus has simil similar chemical um, consistency to the tumors that we've been working on. The practical implication is that this disease starts, we think, um, in the nose and throat, largely, and then it spreads to other parts of the body. We think that treating this disease in the nose and throat with this simple medication using a nose spray should prevent it from spreading to other parts of the body, but also importantly, it should render the virus non-infective to people around that patient. That. Yes. It has huge yes. We think that this could have huge implication for limiting the spread of this disease and also for protecting um, family members, people who are traveling, um, all sorts of uses, and also perhaps to use prophylactically in healthcare workers to uh, prevent them from getting this. So, because the coronavirus has a glycoprotein spike, and I knew from the structure of that that it would be very likely that our drug would fragment it. <laughs> yeah, so we think that this is quite a remarkable um, opportunity. It's a surprising effect that we've seen, and we think that this could be um, a very useful drug. This is an Australian invention, and it's an Australian company that's manufacturing the drug. We think that this could be a very major step forward for both um, the virus and hopefully for this country. Well, we know that it disintegrates the spike protein, and the spike protein is important for gaining access to host cells. Um, the spike protein docks with the ACE2 receptor and gets into your body that way. Well, we have um, clinical trials planned, uh, both in this country and overseas, and we hope that they're going to start within the next week or so. It should be a relatively simple and relatively rapid um, clinical testing. Well, we do have production of this um, in Australia, um, and we think that it would be possible to supply the world from um, Australia with this medication. Um, we can make a large amount of this drug very rapidly. Well, the pineapple um, stem contains an enzyme, and that's one of the components of our drug. We, we discovered this by screening many um, compounds for their effect on tumor-produced mucin. And to be frank, we found very little, and it was only when we looked at combinations of agents that we saw this synergistic effect. That's really our discovery. Whilst we knew that our drug works for these mucinous cancers, trying it in the coronavirus was really quite a wild idea. And at the moment, this is the only drug in the world that actually fragments the spike protein. And what's been the testing? Yes, we've been very fortunate to have cooperation from a French research group that have done live virus tests for us. We have a number of other laboratories in the world that are replicating that work at the moment, including the NIH. Next steps really are some more safety, which we hope to have done very rapidly, and then into man um, to see if we can alter the viral load, we think that those results could be available within days of starting treatment. Yes. Well, we have discovered a remarkable synergy between two agents. And as far as the coronavirus goes, what that does is that it fragments the spike protein, and that prevents the virus from infecting human cells. Uh, we think that this will make a big difference to coronavirus around the world. We think that it will limit um, infections very considerably. We think it will also limit the uh, seriousness of disease in people. And quite independently, we think that this would be useful to prevent infections in healthcare workers.
Hi, my name is Sarah Valley. I'm Prof Morris's research nurse and I'm a PhD candidate for UNSW. So we've heard amazing things going on in this lab. What actually happens? How do you turn an idea into a treatment? Well, we're very lucky to have a fantastic research team. Um, basically, Prof Morris um, has a fantastic brain as well. So we all work together to uh, research um, through the bench laboratory work. Um, then we go into an animal model and see how we can progress a treatment or a drug into a potential treatment and through to, to clinical trial. Okay, so we went from here to France and we did uh, experiments on live coronavirus and we found that the spikes fell off. And so now we're doing more testing with the NIH, with National Institutes of Health in the US and in Brazil, and we're working towards starting a study in Melbourne. So day to day, um, so we obviously don't just focus on COVID, so that is one of our focuses at the moment, but we have uh, cancer research as well as research into biofilm as well. So day to day, our um, work changes. We also have a clinical research team who um, does clinical trials and treats patients with cancer. So we're looking at the next few months. So the next few months are going to be extremely busy. There's a lot of work that we still need to do. We've had fantastic results so far with our live virus tests. We still need to do some safety and some more bench work to show that this is actually going to translate well into patients that need it or for prophylactic setting as well. So everyone's going to be extremely busy. And we um, well, it's exciting doing or being involved in work like this, um, but we also stay focused and try to think about um, the priorities as well, and that's providing um, fantastic data to support the drug that we're researching as well. It's fantastic being involved um, in this drug development. We have a fantastic research team as well. Um, we have a lot of work to do, but it's, it's amazing that we can be um, involved in such a big disease and problem in the world, and we have to try to make things better.